capacity to initiate the demobilization, the disarmament, and the community rehabilitation and stabilization. Finally, Mr. Speaker, the achievement, the last achievement, is the initial deployment of the Kenyan contingent as the first boots on the ground in the joint operation area has secured and has set conditions for deployment of other contingents in the multi-sector sectoral theater or sector of North Kivu, meaning Kenya has demonstrated much needed leadership in a crisis situation. And what I mean is, it was KDF that first went to that theater for the first four months. It's after the success, the achievements, that our colleagues from Burundi, South Sudan, and Uganda are now part of the wider multinational force in that area. So, Speaker, the second part of the question was, what is our exit strategy for KDF troops who are serving under the aircraft from DRC? Speaker, the, 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 the East African Regional Force was first deployed for an initial mandate of six months that lapsed on 30th March 2023. And thereafter, under the leadership of the heads of state, it was extended to 8th of September 2023. In effort to chart the way forward, Mr. Speaker, a technical evaluation team from comprising of experts from all our member states, the East African member states, was constituted in the last heads of state and government summit in Bujumbura, and their main role was to assess the aircraft mandate, assess its achievement, and assess its way forward within the mandate implementation, and render a report to the EAC Sectoral Council of Defense Ministers, which, Mr. Speaker, will take place between the 21st and 23rd of this month in Nairobi. And in this regard, Mr. Speaker, based on that report on the restoration of peace and security in Eastern DRC will be a desired condition in which will tell us the military success and the eventual exit from the mission. Nevertheless, Mr. Speaker, in my concluding remark, the conditions could culminate in Kenyan's exit and aircraft exit, because it is not Kenya which is exiting. It is all the multinational troops within aircraft, Kenya included, that will exit. So if the East African community heads of state and government fail to get renewal of the aircraft current mandate upon its expiry on 8th of September, if for any reason the government of Kenya decides to withdraw KDF, and one of the reasons can be even this house through a motion asking the executive and the National Security Council with the very good reasons to withdraw from Eastern Congo and from the multinational force, in the event the government of the Democratic Republic of Congo withdraws its consent and decides that aircraft should leave, and in the event the mission becomes untenable in terms of security. Those are the scenarios in which KDF can be with, uh, withdrawn from their performance under the East Africa Regional Force. So, Mr. Speaker, our mandate is until 8th of September. At the Defense Headquarters, we always have a plan to make sure that in the event of the four scenarios, we will bring back our troops safe and sound. And Mr. Speaker, finally, it is not only, KDF troops are not only serving under aircraft. Within the DRC, uh, Eastern Congo, under the UN uh, mission, we have, the, we have over 250 Q quick response team, our special forces serving under the, under the UN. We have our communication and signal battalion serving under the UN mandate in Congo. 
those are working within the confine of the U.S. mandate. But for aircraft, our mandate ends on 8th of September. The Council of Ministers, which I am a member, will sit on 21st and 23rd to look at the, uh, the, 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 the technical team evaluation, evaluating the achievements and the way forward. And then the heads of state will meet one week later. If they give the extension, well and good, we'll be in DRC because we have done a lot. If the extension is not granted, I want to assure this house and the country that our troops will come back home safe and secure. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you, Minister. Then go, I think it's as clear as that. Do you want supplementary? Yeah, thank you, Mr. Speaker. Uh, I want to thank uh, the CS for the information that he has given us. Uh, this question was, um, came up because there were concerns that uh, since when Kenyan troops went to GRC, the relationship between Kenyans and uh, Congolese people uh, became, started being wasted, and it is a concern whether uh, is it this intervention is it beneficial or not. Number two, uh, Mr. Speaker, the CS has told us that all the IDPs have moved. I want him to confirm whether the IDPs have really agreed to go back to Goma because the information that I have, which I cannot um, um, well, prove whether it's true or not, but since he has been there in the last one week, can he confirm to the House that indeed, because of Kenyan troops and, and the ICRAF, uh, uh, that group of East Africa, that really the IDPs have gone back, and thirdly, the, well, at what point enough, did uh, uh, it's, this is important, uh, Mr. Speaker? Because they, there is a time when Congo, the Congolese president, had to ask for reinforcement from SADC, the Southern African countries, to bring their troops. Did we fail? Did our troops fail, or what uh, necessitated the reinforcement from South Af Southern countries? Thank you. I'll give one joy rider. I'm Joy Ryder, member for Migori. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, for this opportunity. First, I would like to congratulate our Kenyan soldiers who are in DRC. They are trying their best. But I would like to ask the Honorable Minister that since our troops went to DRC, we have seen refugees coming from DRC and flocking into Kenya. I had an opportunity to go to Kitale showground and meet the refugees from DRC. The purpose of sending our troops was to help DRC get peace in their own country. Are you convinced that our soldiers are doing enough? Because even in the recent days, uh, there was news that there were some places that uh, the rebels attacked, women were raped, children were killed. Um, places like Rugari, Kitashanga, Mueso, Kiwanja, they were attacked, and the majority who were killed were women and children. Are you convinced that our soldiers are doing enough? Or if not, why don't you look for another way out to help DRC so that they get their peace and stop being refugees in other people's country? Thank you, Honorable Speaker. Thank you. Okay, Ferdinand, you're the second joy rider, second and last. Thank you very much, uh, the CS for defense. And I think it's uh, just common sense, much as uh, there could be some uh, complaint, but I want to agree with you that uh, the Eastern U uh, DRC actually had problems. And I think uh, we read widely, uh, the speaker, the opening of the Eastern uh, DRC has actually enabled us to get most of the export coming through Mombasa to DRC and the growth. So I want to take this opportunity and uh, thank you, uh, Madam Minister, for doing what you are doing. And I think what she's saying is true. I've also heard the same thing, but uh, those could be just noises in the past. But as far as I'm concerned, there's a lot of benefit. And in fact, that has enabled DRC to join the East African uh, community. And we actually, so we are opening up the region. And therefore, I, I want to take this opportunity 
to thank uh, the minister for the work being done. Please keep it up. Thank you. Thank you, minister. That's not a question. It's a, co a compliment. Owen Bayer, you'll be the last. Roku, <laughs> Thank you very much, uh, Honorable Speaker. Honorable Speaker, allow me to ask this question uh, to the Honorable Minister, who is a ranking member of this House. Uh, who was? I think that rank does not go away, Mr. Speaker. Yes. <laughs> uh, Mr. Speaker, I would like to ask about the Banyamulenge in uh, Eastern DRC, that they have been excluded from the talks that are being uh, headed by the Kenyan delegation led by the former president. The Bayamulega, as you know, are cross-cutting. They're both in Rwanda and in Congo. But in these talks, they're one of the oppressed organization, or community. And uh, unfortunately, when our former president held the talks, they were removed from the table. And uh, they, they are suffering. And, one, and their leader, uh, Professor uh, Lazare, is incarcerated and nobody knows where he is. And they have been asking Kenya to help them. Unfortunately, this information doesn't seem to reach the former president's desk because they have been blocked. Because it is said the former president is friends with the current president of Congo. And therefore, he is more siding with the, the current Congo regime other than accommodating the other. I do not know whether President Uhuru is being an impartial arbiter on in the DRC Congo, or he has taken sides, and therefore blocking other people who are aggrieved from accessing the negotiation table. And one of the people is Lazare Rukunda. He's a professor. He runs a small university. He was arrested last uh, two weeks, and he's been incarcerated. He's been held in communicando, and his family doesn't know where he is. I think, uh, Honorable uh, uh, Minister, you have a responsibility to ensure that Kenya is a good arbiter in these discussions and that everybody in the Congo is protected. I thank you, Honorable Speaker. Minister, answer those short questions very quickly. We got the next question. Speaker, uh, I agree with Honorable Member for Mwingi uh, on, on the IDPs. Not all IDPs have gone back. It's a huge crisis. If you go to the road between Goma to Kibumba, you'll find IDPs. But gradually, now that there's peace and security and stability, you will find, particularly where the Kenyan troops are, people are going back to their homes, people are uh, 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 planting their farms. Secondly, Mr. Speaker, my good sister, the member of parliament for Migori, uh, really asked me about the issues to do with women and all that. I think one of the mandates that uh, ICRAF and most of the Kenya Defense Forces have done and achieved in Eastern DRC, and I, I saw it, that they are really taking care of the most vulnerable parts of the society, which is one of the things that we can credit our forces, the w protecting women, children, elderly. In fact, that two days ago, Mr. Speaker, our own forces helped a lady deliver twins in, in an area called Kibumba. They are providing water. And uh, even what the member from Mwingi, Mwishimiwa uh, uh, Mwingi North said, is that the, 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 the clip of the video you see going round, those are old clips. If a committee of this house happens to visit, you'll see the Kenyan troops who have been there are very much welcome. And if you go to these cities, Kisangani, Beni, Goma, you'll find huge Kenyan businesses in the petroleum sector, in commodities. So on that part of the world, again, is, a, is, a, is, is an area where Swahili is spoken. Honorable Baya, Mr. Speaker, I really want you to indulge me and maybe invoke the standing order. That is an internal political matter of DRC. And I don't want to discuss it because you are a long-ranking foreign minister. I don't want to be quoted that I am uh, discussing personal, political, internal issues of the government. Our troops are in that theater. They are under the DRC government. I don't want to take and discuss politics. So you will uh, ask me, uh, but Banyamulenge, they are known there as M23. So speaker, I don't want to say anything on that. Maybe when he gets an opportunity and get the former president who is leading the political track, 
then they can have a chat. So I can't discuss, Mr. Speaker. I really, you'll forgive me. Of course, the one for Honorable uh, Ferdinand, Mr. Speaker, was a comment. But Mr. Speaker, I want to say it off the cuff. Apart from restoring peace and security in DRC, and in, in Somalia, in all our regional, uh, our neighbors, Mr. Speaker, we have an economic interest. That part of, of DRC is where the port of Mombasa is a key player, where many Kenyans, Equity Bank, Mr. Speaker, is the largest bank in that country. KCB, Mr. Speaker, has bought the biggest local bank there. There are many Kenyans. So apart from making sure a stable, secure DRC, Mr. Speaker, is good for the economy of our country, is good for regional trade, is good for regional integration. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Member for Rook, what is it? I want to close this and go to the next question. Mr. Speaker, for any nation which has uh, developed, most of them, about 80% of the developed nation, they have the economic, they have military as part of the economic plan. And it will be important if the minister can stipulate clearly what is the military, how, how uh, the government is integrating military into the economic plan so that we can be able to come out of poverty as a nation. It is important uh, when the military is deployed in Congo, in, in Somali, and many other uh, countries around Africa, we need, as a nation, to be able to know clearly what is, how does that fit within our economic plan. It is extremely important, Mr. Speaker, and this is something which has been avoided over the years by the Kenyan uh, military. It is important for the Kenyan military to ensure it is playing a critical role in the economic development of this country, not only the security. And this is a matter of history for those who are students of international relations and diplomacy, Mr. Speaker. Thank you. What is it? Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Allow me first to congratulate the minister, the honorable ranking member of this house. I believe his ranking status is still active. Uh, for executing the questions of, of the day in a, in a very well-informed uh, manner. But Mr. Speaker, I would want to ask the Honorable Bare Duale to tell us what are the deliverables of the forces when they go to such missions? And how do they measure deliverables in comparison with our expectations as a country, just like my colleague Honorable Ruku has asked? What are our gains when we send these troops to those countries? How do we benefit as Kenya? Other than just saying that we have regional peace, how do the individual troops members, our soldiers, benefit when they go to these missions? Honorable Speaker, I would also want to ask Honorable Duare, since November 22, what have we achieved as Kenya since we sent these troops to the regions. Thank you, Honorable Speaker. Regional obligations to the uh, do not necessarily carry economic benefits. It is a moral duty to your region. Yes, uh, what is your, question, your point of order, my able y Yes, honorable, assistant. honorable Speaker, you partly responded to my matter of concern. My worry is that there are matters of the nation we could be discussing in the context of our regional intervention, which may not be prudent. In fact, may call for in-camera proceedings if necessary. So I, I wanted to request your intervention, Honorable Speaker, that those matters we are raising, both by the Honorable Ruku and uh, my good sister, Omuchomba, could be collateral. They are not matters to be discussed in, a matter, in, a, in, a, in, a, in the context that we are proceeding now. I thank you, Honorable Speaker. We'll go to question 230 of 2023. Honorable Dual, if you wish, you can write to Honorable Ruku and tell him the economic benefits of the military. <laughs> and Honorable Omchomba, our military don't go out to protect us for any personal gain. It's a patriotic duty. Honorable Lote. Uh, thank you, Mr. Speaker. Uh, noting uh, 
that the military recruitment will be starting on the 28th of this month, and there's a lot of anxiety from the young people. I'll wish to ask the Cabinet Secretary uh, the following questions. One, could the Cabinet Secretary explain the measures that are put in place to curb serious, serious malpractices like bribery and nepotism during the military recruitments? so as to accord poor but well-deserving Kenyans fair opportunities in the recruitments. Two, I wish to ask the Cabinet Secretary to explain the affirmative action strategies that the government is putting in place to ensure that the Kenyans from the marginalized regions, such as Kachaliba and others, and Rukanaya, and all those other regions are considered in the ever elusive military uh, jobs. And the last one, I'll wish the cabinet secretary to explain mechanisms that the government has put in place to enable Kenyans to report on malpractices that are witnessed during the subsequent military recruitment. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you, Minister. Just hold for a minute. Allow me to acknowledge the following schools in the gallery. Soliat Boys High School, Soin Sigoet Kericho, Fim School, Kimilili, Kimilili Bungoma, Mukinyai Primary School, Molo Nakuru, Hekima Marigat School Primary, Baringo South Baringo, and these are primary schools for Molo, Mwangi Muchuki Primary School, Rombei Primary School, Lawina Primary School, Arimi Primary School, all from Molo constituents in Akuru County. Uh, Minister, indulge me to give the member for Molo one minute on behalf of all of us to acknowledge the presence of those schools. Thank you very much, Honorable Speaker. It's indeed is a great privilege we have 274 pupils from different primary schools in Molo constituency, starting with my own primary school, Wangimuchuki Primary School. Honorable Speaker, that's one of the most uh, public school in Molo that was hardly known, that produced the member of parliament for Molo constituency and the chair for the Departmental Committee of Finance and National Planning. Uh, it, is this, it is this school that produced the first ever MP to be re-elected since the since, uh, last 30 years, and therefore I'm very privileged to associate with this, uh, my former primary school, Mangi Pichuki Primary School. It's a great encouragement to the other schools, Mokinyai uh, Primary School, Rumbai Primary School, Lawina Primary School, uh, and that's why, Honorable Speaker, every time I, take a, I get a chance, I invite them to come to Nairobi to observe parliament proceedings, to see Nairobi. Because, Honorable Speaker, in my vernacular, there is a proverb that says, he who does not travel uh, thinks his mom is the only one who is able to cook. So it is their chance to come and see Nairobi and uh, aspire to also be members of parliament, to be governors, to be president, to be anything that they dream to be. Because if the son of a single mother from a humble background, from Mukinyai, who went to public primary school, public secondary school, public university, can be where he is now then not even the sky is a limit. And I thank you, Honorable Speaker, for your dangers. Well, um, Minister, congratulations for your journey in life. Minister. Mr. Speaker, in answering this question, I really want to urge the country and the House that they should not charge us, they should not use the benchmark of the previous recruitment. It's the first recruitment under my leadership and it's the first recruitment under this uh, administration. Mr. Speaker, KDF recruitment process is guided by the Constitution of Kenya, specifically Article 10 1C that protects and provides for national values and principles of governance which will bind all state organs, state officers, public officers, and all persons whenever any of them makes or implements public policy decisions. 
The Speaker, the Ministry of Defense is determined to protect Kenyans from fraudsters posing as KDF recruitment agents, bent on marrying on an open, free, fair recruitment process. Therefore, Mr. Speaker, at the beginning of every recruitment circle, eligible applicants are provided with very clear guidelines on when and where they should present themselves and how, should, how they should apply to join Kenya Defense Forces. Indeed, the public is always advised during the recruitment drive to avoid giving bribes and other favors to impersonate in the pretext that they will be assisted in securing employment in the KDF. Mr. Speaker, the aforestated notwithstanding, there are isolated instances where KDF personnel have been involved in recruitment malpractices. And to serve as a deterrence, Mr. Speaker, all suspected cases have been thoroughly investigated. Those found culpable subjected to judicial process in the form of court martial, often leading to dismissal from service or imprisonment. And Mr. Speaker, the answer which I have provided to this house, I think in about five to six copies, I have attached Annex A that provides into the status of the completed and ongoing cases of individual officers and more so general officers who were prosecuted since the last recruitment, which was in July of last year. Mr. Speaker, that annex will show you the rank of those officers. It will show you the crime they committed. And all these officers faced the court martial precisely because of recruitment. Mr. Speaker, the second question was explain the affirmative action strategies that the government is putting in place to ensure Kenyans from marginalized communities and regions are considered elusive for military jobs. Mr. Speaker, if you allow me, I think the volition was to solve marginalization. I am sure there are issues, but I think the, the term marginalized, Mr. Speaker, will be a thing of the past very soon. Mr. Speaker, KDF is conscious of the country's ethnic diversity and always promotes a national outlook among its ranks. And even if you look at the hierarchy and the leadership of Kenya Defense Forces, Mr. Speaker, on the face of it, represents the face of Kenya in terms of diversity, tribe, religion, and the region they come from. This is predicted, Mr. Speaker, is predicated on the Defense Forces' primary role of defending and protecting the country on the basis of inclusion. Therefore, Mr. Speaker, the distribution of slots, selection, and development of KDF human capital is inherently reflected on the face of Kenya on the account of equity as required in our Constitution. One of the guiding principles, Mr. Speaker, in the KDF Act of 2012 that stipulates that recruitment must reflect the diversity of the Kenyan people in a allowable proportion that ensures that the composition of the command of KDF also embraces the principle of equity and inclusivity. And Mr. Speaker, since I took over as a Minister for Defense, one of the principles that I say people will remember for me as a Minister for Defense is to make sure that the rank and the leadership of Kenya Defense Forces reflects the diversity and the communities in our country. Therefore, equitable distribution of slots to counties, sub-counties, and divisions in some places always are computed at the planning phase of the recruitment circle, and they are based on the following parameters. Number one, national population according to the latest national census. Two, population and demography, demography in each county, sub-county, and in some cases, some divisions. Three, K KDF human resource needs on the current manning levels among KDF officers, service members, 
and constables. Four, current number of officers, service members, and constables from each and each sub-county. So, Mr. Speaker, we look at holistically the numbers of our human resource in Kenya Defense Forces. And based on that, we will look at the numbers from each sub-county. And based on that, we will create slots for every county, for every sub-county uh, in our country. So, Speaker, sometimes we look at the social political variables, rural versus urban, marginalized groups and indigenous groups. Speaker, finally, the recruiting officers are required to submit to the defense headquarters daily returns to satisfy the defense leadership that quotes, quotas are being enforced. So, Mr. Speaker, for example, in a sub-county in Bungoma County, if the number to be recruited were eight or ten, Speaker, just like IBC, we have a command center at the defense headquarters. On real time, the moment those seven are recruited, their ID, their names, their age, everything is submitted to make sure that in between, Mr. Speaker, there were many times people were making uh, 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 a lot of, uh, were using a lot of corruption, where seven people will go to the, to the recruitment center, they are told you have been taken, and in the evening they are chased away and replaced with other people. Speaker, I really want to uh, I, I assure you this house because we are oversighted by the representative of the people. Myself and General Ogola will make sure that the moment the seven are recruited, our command center at the defense headquarters in real time will receive them so that nobody in this recruitment can change anything. And I want the house to take me to charge on that matter, Mr. Speaker. Speaker, finally, was the question of explaining the mechanism that government has put in place to enable Kenyans report malpractices witnessed during subsequent. Speaker, first, before I tell the country the mechanism, I want Kenyans not to bribe our officers. That's the beginning. Because the bribe taker, they must be the giver. So there are people I'm sure who are watching me. Some of them are con men, some of them are fraudsters, some of them make cash during the recruitment. Parents, I want to talk to the parents of Kenya. Don't bribe anybody. Let your son and daughter present themselves at the recruiting center and our officers are under obligation to make sure that each and every Kenyan is given an opportunity. Mr. Speaker, the Kenya Defense Forces Recruitment Drive has a lot of adverts, free to all eligible candidates. Members of the public are warned against engaging in malpractices, a view to influence the process, and they're encouraged to report any suspicious. So, Speaker, at all our recruitment centers, recruiting officers are required to make verbal announcement, reiterating the implication of non compliance with a warning to desist. So, Speaker, this year we have asked AAC and the DCI and all other civil society organizations within the locality we are recruiting to make sure that they are on standby and our members, our officers are not vulnerable. We will give a call number where even parents can call and say there was a fraud, uh, fraud going on. So Mr. Speaker, I really want to uh, ask this House that uh, judge us, judge me, judge General Ogola and the entire leadership of Kenya Defense Forces on this recruitment. And I'm sure there will be a difference this time around. Bed Simba of Kisauni. Yes. Asante sana, uh, hold Mishimiwa. Hold Bed Simba, hold, hold your joy rider. The first bite must go to the oh, member who asked the question. To ask a supplement. I'll come back to you immediately. Uh, thank you, Mr. Speaker. I, I really want to appreciate the Cabinet Secretary for the exposition of the fact that he is, we want to change the face of the military recruitment, especially the KDF. Uh, that is a very good admission and also a very good way forward from the Cabinet Secretary. Mr. Speaker, as we speak today, 
Uh, I think I speak on behalf of many of the parents, and the reason why I raise this question is on the basis that from the villages where I come from, parents are selling land now, and there is a price already uh, for the job. So what the Cabinet Secretary has said is good, but I want it to be put in practice, Mr. Cabinet Secretary, because it is very easy to speak, but the young people that are actually agitated and worried want a voice that comes to you, and that is the voice that Lotte today is giving before you. Two, when we talk about uh, marginalization, and we say that because of the sub-counties and the counties and the, and the sub-locations, that positions are going to be given, I wish the Cabinet Secretary to note that even within their locations, there are people that are marginalized from there. So that if you go to a place like Kachaliba, for example, they will be the powerful people that will come from wherever to take those jobs from them because they are weak. I want the cabinet secretary to assure this house and to assure Kenyans that what you have said today, that there is no bribery. Because the challenge, cabinet secretary, is when we tell people do not bribe, and then you don't bribe, and the other person bribes, and half the child go to the military recruitment, the one who did not give bribe will feel disadvantaged, Mr. Speaker. Uh, Mr. Speaker. I think then it's the, the own sense of the cabinet secretary to ensure that we, this particular time, see that there is no person that is going to be taken because of a bribe. I wish to say this on behalf of these members. These are the representatives of the people, uh, cabinet secretary. Can they be allowed, can they be allowed, just alongside the ESCC and the DCIs, to be within the precinct of the recruitment center so that they can also be an eye to report to this house should there be malpractices. Thank you. Asante sana mwishmiwa speaker kwa nipa nafasi kuuliza swali la ziyada. Waziri wa ulinzi tunaimani na wewe na tunaimani kwa mba kutapatika na mabadiliko. Lakini swali langu ni nimekusikia ukisema kwa mba usajili wa wanajeshi uko huru. Lakini kuna wa Kenya ambao wanakatazwa kujiunga na jeshi kwa sababu ya kimo chao. Na si wagonjwa, wanavaa viatu, wanavaa masuruale na wana afya, lakini wanakataliwa kwa sababu wanambuwa ni wafupi. Na hiyo ufupi wao ni kwamba ni mungu wa hivyo. Kwa nini mna wanyima wasiunge na jeshi? Na hao na imani kama mnaona ni wafupi, hao ndo wanaweza kumfikia duhi bila kuonekana. <laughs> eh? Eh, kama wachina ni wafupi zaidi na ni wanajeshi kwa nini na wanyima wa Kenya wanajisikia kama wao hawawezi kulinda taifa lao kwa hivyo mheshimiwa uh, waziri hilo jambo litakamilika tuliangalia kwa makini sana na tuseme uhuru kama hao tumeweka nje asante sana thank you i then the don one joy rider yegon Here we are gone. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Speaker, for giving me also this opportunity to contribute. Uh, it's not a contribution. No, no, no. Sorry. It's a to, <laughs> to ask the Minister or the Cabinet Secretary about um, as, as late as yesterday, the day before yesterday, when I was coming from my constituency, I got some people who came, around two of them, and asked me that uh, uh, there is a recruitment of. Uh, Kenya Defense Forces, uh, which is going on, which has been advised so far. And what happened is that uh, they are t asking me, how can you, help? they were even coming to ask me for money, saying, give me, let's like, say, um, um, 300,000, I've gotten uh, 100,000, I need another 300,000, so that my person can be employed. What I want to ask the minister is, what measures have you taken to make sure that these people have not been exploited because many people have been extorted money and they are not getting those jobs. Thank okay. you, Mr. Speaker. Elisha, although he had actually dealt with your question. Elisha, Patia, Elisha, you are giving to the wrong address. There you are. Uh, thank you, Mr. Speaker, sir. I want to congratulate the CS for the statement. 
And uh, looking at his history of competence, I'm confident that this recruitment will be fair. On behalf of the people of game, what I'm asking, the list of recruitment centers gave us two sub-counties. The one I highlighted gave me Allah. I request that Game Wagai equally be highlighted as a recruitment center. And finally, for a long time, the people of Game, very minimal numbers were taken. But as years, I hope that this time, look at the history, you can compensate the people of Game and the numbers. And even if the soldiers, the, your recruiting officers will be in Game, looking at uh, the competence of those who are, they are going to recruit, I hope that you can negate uh, the appearance of the teeth, because that necessarily does not help carrying a weapon. Thank you, but as yes, and the speaker, Mr. Speaker, sir. CNN. Thank you, thank you, Speaker, for giving this opportunity. Speaker, I just want to ask the, uh, our honorable CS, a ranking member we have served together. Uh, in the recent past, Mwinki West, and during the recruitment of candidate officers, we have not had even an opportunity to have one representative in the military. What is the CS doing this time round to ensure we are included in this recruitment this year? Thank you. Candidate officer. My club. Uh, thank you, Mr. Speaker. I am one person who has always believed one Arden Barrett Wale for high competence of doing his job. And this being our first recruitment as Kenya Kwanzaa government, I want to ask the minister to really be very vigil. The, we need, you need to do work on cyber crime. So speaker, I want to report to this house that someone hacked my Facebook account, my 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 photograph. Yeah, Mr. Speaker, I just want to report. Eh? And report to the police. Ask I, I have already report. I have already reported, Mr. Speaker. Yes. And it is very important for members to know yes. there are people who are calling people using yes. using a very important security. Yes. So my question is, in Baringo North, we have five divisions, Mr. Speaker. For a long time, when it comes to recruitment, one division is not being counted. It is being included as Kabartonjo, and yet we have Saimo Soy Division, fully with a DO. And when it comes to recruitment, for the last very many years, Mr. Speaker, that division called Saimo Soy Bordering like Baringo has not had an opportunity to get even a single person to be recruited into the military. Can this time, when the officers come to the ground, Mr. Speaker, ensure that as they announce the number of slots in Baringo North, then they can be shared among the five divisions actually in Baringo North, Mr. Speaker, so that it is fair and then ensure what is the problem in Kenya, Mr. Speaker, is can recruitment be done and finished during the day? Mr. Speaker, immediately it goes beyond 6, 6 p.m. That is the beginning of corruption. So can this time end at four across the Republic so that Matters become sincere. I needed only two joy riders. Now everybody wants to joy ride. Yes. Uh, oh. Kirima, I'm not giving you. You are soliciting. How okay. come? Is that Kagombe? Sigor. 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 Member for Sigor. Yes. Yes, uh, there's a light behind here. I can't see you clearly. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Honorable. Ask your question. Yeah, thank you, Honorable Speaker, for giving me this opportunity eh, to ask uh, our CS. We have a lot of uh, confidence and trust that uh, this time round the recruitment will be different. Now, uh, I want to ask if, for example, Pokot Central, which is Igor constituency, has been given, let's say, five slots. Can it further be taken down to wards 
so that now there is fairness in the distribution of the recruitment so that now the five slots do not go to one region. And then maybe now uh, also reinforce the fact that uh, let us assist the minister or the CS in ensuring that people don't give bribes. Thank you very much. Okay, Kirima. Minister, not all those. That's small, small, short questions. You can answer. Thank you, Honorable you Speaker, sir. My good question is to the minister. Minister, you are very much aware that uh, in Central Ment constituency, it has been proposed and it has gone through public participation that there will be three sub, -count sub counties. He meant uh, Abu Dhabi West, Abu Dhabi Central, and Abu Dhabi East. And it's only one sub county, that is Abu Dhabi Central, which has been declared as a and recruitment center. Is it possible to have the other two recruitment centers, Abduguchi West and Abduguchi East? Is it possible? Of which I believe with your intervention is going to be possible. Thank you, sir. Sorry, the poster. Uh, thank you, Mr. Speaker, for this opportunity. Uh, speaker, recently I went through the papers and saw Tana River County is also uh, uh, considered for this uh, recruitment. But surprisingly, the recruitment center is Wayu. Wayu is in a different sub county called Galedertu. Tana River uh, uh, sub county, the headquarters is Hola. So I wanted assurance from the minister that uh, the, 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 the recruitment for Tana River sub county will be done in Hola, but not Wayu, which is in Galedertu sub county. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Minister. <coughs> minister, Ms. hold. I take two sh quick short words. Okay. Martin okay. Wanyoni. Uh, thank you, Mr. Speaker. Uh, Mr. Speaker. My question is just simple to the Minister. The Speaker, last recruitment in July, we saw uh, recruitment centers that have been gazetted being changed around 12 a.m. in the midnight. So can really Minister uh, assure the House that the recruitment, centers, the, the recruitment centers that have been gazetted will not be changed at the detriment of uh, many of the youth uh, who want to participate in this process. Finally, uh, Mr. Speaker, um, the newly gazetted uh, administrative units, the, this process is still relying on the old administrative units. Can the minister uh, collect this process with the current gazetted and operationalized administrative units, Mr. Speaker? Thank you. Minister. Mr. Speaker, there's a, a double of uh, uh, colleagues, members of parliament, uh, or with a common question yes. on sub counties. And I want to state it here, number one, to Martin, Honorable Martin, that uh, no center will be changed. At midnight, all the centers now have been published. They're in the newspapers, they're in our website. And I want to assure you, particularly under this administration, no center will be changed. But for the, for the sub-counties, some which have been combined, for example, a honorable member for Galole, your governor, your leadership are in consultation with our leadership at Defense Headquarters we will make a decision, and a number of other sub-counties, we are going to make a decision. Already leaders have arrived at our offices. So the sub-counties, but the issue of sub-counties is a matter of the Ministry of Interior. We generate our list from Interior, and there are some counties which already have not been, have not been uh, uh, operationalized, and they maybe they have a good reason. So I think we will also consult the Minister of Interior. 
The speaker, Honorable Lote, the originator of this matter, I want to ask, tell him that members of parliament, MCAs, politicians, are no go zone at our recruitment centers. So please don't go. You have no business there. Because you must have, you must have a business. EAC have a business. Uh, the police have a business. The, the, the youth who want to be recruited have a business. So members of parliament uh, are not allowed. And secondly, Mr. Speaker, the Honorable Member for Kisauni, every job seeker must have and must qualify, and there must be qualifications. So please, there are certain checklists for you to be recruited as cadet. There are certain checklists for you to be recruited as a service person constable. It is historical. It is in all military. I'm the speaker, I had the opportunity to serve in NYS in my many years when I was, uh, before I joined the university. And it's NYS I realized why uh, height is an issue in, uh, in disciplined forces. So Honorable Bezinga, there are many opportunities. Short people can work in KPA. Short people, they can work in other agencies. But please, when it comes to, we want to have the best military. So let us, the way you know we have diluted many other professions with the people who have got fake certificates, let us not, let us leave to the fidelity of the qualification of joining the Kenya Defense Forces so they can protect our country. I am sure I was asked that question, Honorable Bensinger, by many people. Honorable Yagon, we can't stop. You know, fraudsters are everywhere. We can't stop them right now collecting money. But I want to tell the people, in fact, that rate you have said 400 is a standard. Even in my former constituency, the 400 is a standard. And I want to speak, if you allow me, please, Kenyans, don't pay. Don't pay 400. And any of our officers, Mr. Speaker, where integrity, professionalism, and high moral ground is required is in the Kenya Defense Forces. Any of our officers who wants to participate in bribery, he has no place in the Kenya Defense Forces. That we are telling them. They can, they can do it somewhere else. Honorable CNN is the same. I think we will uh, discuss, please. Uh, Join us at the Ministry of uh, Defense, talk to the leadership. Honorable Elisha, you are the same on sub-counties. I think we are, that is a matter which is recurring. Uh, member for Baringo North, uh, yes, in certain situations, we deal with the, and the speaker, the member is not here. This is the problem I used to have when I was the leader of majority, that members ask questions even in committees before the answer is said, they leave. So I think good thing is when you ask a question, it's good you listen for, you wait for the answer. Absolutely. Yes. <laughs> Honorable, my good friend, member for Baringo North, he asked a question and he has disappeared. But uh, my, the, our ranking member. Maybe he has taken my advice seriously and he's gone to the police to report. <laughs> yes. Yes, I think he has gone <laughs> to the nearest uh, police station. The speaker, I think I have a uh, 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 member for Sigor, yes. Baringo Central. You know, when we have our, our recruitment center, we work for, we recruit from Kenyans. The basic qualification number one is an ID card. So we cannot say you, are, you must come from that sub-county or that county. But uh, we cannot say, no, no, we have to balance divisions. That I think you know, is not very tidy for our officers to do. Honorable Kirima, the same thing on sub-counties which we are going to deal with. And Honorable Said, uh, uh, the same. From the speaker, the common theme, and I think uh, that one we, I really want to ask members who have not uh, had discussion with our leadership on the sub-counties and why some have been merged. Uh, we, are, we are ready until uh, before the 28th so that we can resolve those issues. Thank you. Next question, Mama Zamzam. Your hand has been up in the air throughout. What is the problem? No, I have a question uh, to Mushmi Waziri. You know, so many people are asking about recruitment. Me, I want to ask about the safety of our soldiers while they are working. Uh, Mwishmi Waziri, we've seen uh, most of our soldiers dying because of uh, bombs when their cars are moving on top of the bombs. What have you done to make sure that we have uh, vehicles that are bomb-proof so that we can save the lives of our soldiers? And those who died, what are you doing to compensate them? Because we've seen so many families complaining that they have not received any compensation. Thank you, Waziri. 
answer that in one minute. We go to the next question. Yeah, Mr. Speaker, I want to assure uh, the Member of Parliament for Mombasa that a serious modernization of our military has taken off under this administration. And by the month of November, APCs and high quality uh, vehicles, armored vehicles, that will protect our forces from the, po uh, from the weapon of choice by terrorists, which is IED, will never happen again. And Next. secondly, Mr. Speaker, uh, on the pension and the compensation, Speaker, I want to say it here that Kenya Defense Forces have the most robust compensation. If there is anyone who has not been compensated adequately, please write to me and we will answer. Member for, yes, what is it? Uh... Who is the member? Thank, thank you, Honorable Speaker. Honorable Speaker, on the issue of KDF recruitment, the minister has assured Timothy, us. I yes. I have not given you the floor, my friend. Sorry. But go ahead. Members yes. desist from that kind of conduct. Go but ahead. As, as an independent member of parliament, Honorable Speaker, we also have a right to be heard in this house. Honorable Speaker, I have a question direct to the minister. He has assured us that the process will be free, will be fair, will be transparent and credible. Honorable Speaker, is the minister willing to resign if the process is compromised and is found not to be free, not to be fair, not, be, not to be transparent and credible? Is the minister, will the minister be willing to resign? <laughs> Mr. Speaker, yes. the procedure of a minister resigning, the procedure of the removal of a minister lies with the powers of this house. Next question, 311, nominated member, and the Honorable Timothy Kipchumba. The chair does not, and the speaker does not look at any member in terms of party. Your legitimacy in this house is equal to each and every other member, whether you are independent or elected under the cover of a party. So don't have any of those blinkers. Nominated MP Ali Abdisirat. We must make progress. We have many questions we need to deal with. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. And thank you, Waziri, for having time. My question is as follows. Could the Cabinet Secretary provide timelines within which the family of the late Ms. Naima Abbas Amaina and the late Ms. Elama Abbas, who was expect, expectant, will be compensated for their murder on 7th of April 2019 within an abandoned Kenya Defense Force camp in the deep area of Wajia County. Due to an explosion from an exploded ordinance that resulted in their dismembership, dismember, dismemberment, sorry. Two, Clarify whether KDF is considering providing psychosocial support to the immediate family of affected uh, by uh, I mean uh, family affected by this incident. And lastly, Mr. Speaker, outline the plans underway to clear landmines and any other explosives in the northeastern area, including Wajia and Samburu, that were left after military activities in that in that region that pose significant threat to the safety of the local residents. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Very well, Minister. Mr. Speaker, uh, this matter of the late Ms. Elima Abbas, who unfortunately and very sad during this incident was unexpected, and um, Mrs. Naima Abbas, who was 13 years old, it's a very, very sad uh, matter that happened in 2019 near our KDF camp in Deaf area of Ojir County. Uh, it's a matter that we discuss at the defense headquarters. And Mr. Speaker, through your guidance, we have, in conclusion, 
felt that when this matter went to court, Kenya Defense Forces won the case. But as part of our relationship with the communities in those regions and in many places, Mr. Speaker, we want to engage and we want to ask the Member of Parliament to provide us with the next of kin of Mrs. Naima Abbas and Ms. Elima Abbas so that together we can work out an affordable compensation uh, program uh, which the Kenya Defense Forces uh, want to undertake. And I want to be counted on that. So, Mr. Speaker, I think this matter, this matter should, be, uh, should not uh, be discussed because we have decided that uh, despite the court ruling, we want to, out of our social uh, corporate responsibility, KDF values, communities values, because communities give us land, communities uh, work with us in intelligence, communities uh, do a lot of business with our camps, and because uh, the, the, the mother was expectant and the child was 13 years, out of moral ground, Mr. Speaker, we brought our heads together, the Defense Council, which I chair, and we have found out under the leadership of General Ogola, we have found out that we will uh, engage the Member of Parliament, we will engage the next of kin, and we will provide the appropriate compensation, notwithstanding the court ruling. Very well, Minister. What's your point of order, Honorable Member? Thank you, uh, Mr. Speaker, and thank you to the CS. I wanted to get a clarity from uh, CS when he said members are not supposed to go in the recruitment because that's part of our oversight role. So I thought he needs to tell us because it is within the Constitution. Thank you. Well, that matter was already stayed over and uh, wound up. And therefore, I only gave you a chance because he rose on a point of order. However, that matter is already spent. So let's allow the Honorable Member who had asked the question to proceed with the first bite of supplementary. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I take this opportunity to most sincerely thank the Defense Secretary for having uh, discussed the matter internally with, uh, with his uh, team and uh, has assured us that he is doing something. Because the family uh, has suffered. Indeed, they have suffered. In fact, the father of those uh, teenage girls who perished have become, I mean, senile due to the, uh, that incident. So mine is to thank the Minister of, uh, for Defense for coming up with that amicable solution. Thank you very much indeed. Very well, Honorable Member. Yes, uh, uh, Honorable Umi, proceed with your question. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Um, I would like to also thank the Cabinet Secretary for his great efforts in answering the questions. But my issue is still uh, within the issue on security. Currently in Garissa, we have the gun welding people who are killing each other left, right, and center. And we've been dealing with it for the last one month and the last one year. Maybe just to bring to the attention of the cabinet secretary, how far has that issue uh, gone? The area is within township, which is also happens to be the area he was the member of parliament before. Kunaso has a lot of um, insecurity and uh, land issues. Maybe I would like the cabinet secretary to answer that question and tell us how far it has gone. And also the illegal transfer of the deputy OCS in that area. Maybe we can get an answer on that. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Yes, this question has been fairly dealt with. Remember, yes. the own minister has accepted that they are going to give compensation so uh, we should not spend so much time on it. But however, uh, Honorable Minister, as you'll be answering just the question asked by Honorable Umi, remember that you have not really answered part three of that question, outline the plans underway yes. to clear landmines. You notice that? Yes. So you will also take that one. On this particular one, let me give Honorable Member the last bite, and then we move on. 
Asante sana. Kwanza pongezi mheshimiwa waziri. Siku ya leo ngao umefanya sura zetu zina furaha kwa sababu unajibu kwa ufasaha. Ah mheshimiwa waziri, tumeona clip ikizunguka kwenye mtandao na yule ni brigadia ama sijuni nani wa Sudan akiwapa vitisho. Ningependa kujua kama tuna uhusiano mzuri ama ilikuwa na maana gani? Na kisha pia ningetaka kujua hawa watoto wetu walipotezwa Mombasa wakishukiwa kuwa ni alshabab na hawakupelekwa kotini hawajapatikana mpaka leo. Unafanya mbinu gani ili wazazi wao wajue ima wamechukuliwa hatua ama wako wapi hawa wapendo wao? Asante sana mheshimiwa waziri. Minister Mr. Speaker, I think uh, as a former ranking member, you need to help me guide the House because supplementary questions must ideally relate to the question that I'm answering. And I really want to ask my good sisters that the matter you are asking me are more of the interior minister. My business and the business of defense is to protect the territorial and sovereignty of our country, so the borders. But uh, please, that video of the, of the Brigadier of the Sudan, in quote, Sudan National Forces, please treat it with the contempt it deserves. That is not how military officers worldwide communicate. So if he was a member of the Kenya Defense Forces, he would have appeared before court martial, and now he should have been in jail. Secondly, I think the matter of uh, people disappeared. You must thank this administration. You must thank the president. And that's why you must. There are people who don't want this government to run because part of the crimes they have committed was extrajudicial killing. Zamzam, please, as you, my good uh, sister from Mombasa, a member of parliament, you must not relent on asking the people who killed innocent Kenyans through extrajudicial killing, the Kinotis, and those who worked in the previous administration, they must account for each and every person they have killed. And I'm happy, Mr. Speaker, I'm happy this administration, as late as yesterday, the president was categorical. That Honorable Kaluma, what's your point of Honorable Speaker, <laughs> our former majority leader is doing very well. And I'm quiet because I'm waiting for the last statement he'll make to commend him for the good work he's doing. Honorable Speaker, I'm one MP who cried when he was to leave Parliament, and I've not been disappointed. But Honorable Speaker, the standing orders for which he stood very strongly, and which he still remembers, prohibits the discussion of any person who cannot defend himself before the House. May I request that uh, you know, he withdraws references to those individuals who for good reasons in the standing orders are protected from mention in our proceedings. Like the ones he's calling the Kinotis, I don't know who it is, but whoever it is, uh, let us retract those. And then, and then the minister can continue on the good note. And, then, and by the way, it's the best, the best uh, example of why we needed ministers in this house, Honorable Speaker. Let us not, uh, you know, go into that. Thank you. That was a point of order. And uh, let me guide that uh, I deliberately gave it to Hon Kaluma, and he has properly covered it. That Honorable Minister, I also want to protect you on supplementary questions that are not relevant to the question which you have been asked to come and answer before this house because that may require substantive question and uh, research for the, the, those uh, such like questions. And therefore, Honorable Minister, stick to the answers and uh, please just avoid that small hangover. You know you were the best here during your time. Get back to your position and deal with the questions directly and then also deal with number three, part three of the question. Proceed, Minister. Mr. Speaker, I, 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 I abide by your ruling and abide by Honorable Kaluma. But you know, unfortunately, I was taken that route by 
the two gracious lady from Garissa and Mombasa. Uh, sometimes when you are taken off Mombasa Road and you are taken to Bunyala Road, sometimes you might, <laughs> you don't know what you're doing, but I... I Minister, but, uh, you noticed they took you off route, yes, and uh, you and know they are taking you in a place where you are best at, but please yes, go back. Yeah, so I've gone back, Proceed. and I'm sure... I'll, uh, but let me, because Honorable uh, Umbi is a gracious lady from my uh, county and town, I want to assure her that there's no place for militias and gangs, not only in Garissa, for every. When we start dealing with them, both the interior and defense, because our base is around that place, the Modica base. When we start dealing with them, let us deal with them as criminals and not as clan members. And we are coming there. It's our duty to make sure that each and every Kenyan is safe. Mr. Uh, Speaker, the last part was uh, on what we are doing on these explosives in parts of northern Kenya. Speak at the KDF training activities, which we do in many counties in the north, are conducted in conformity with the regulations and standing orders which provides guidelines on safety measures depending on the form of training being undertaken. In this regard, training is normally implemented in designated areas. And activities are followed by comprehensive clearance of an exploded ordinance to ensure and secure public safety. In addition, Mr. Speaker, the KDF periodically deploys explosive ordnance disposal teams equipped with specialized kits to deter and dispose of explosive materials that may either be buried in the, in the ground or concealed by vegetation. Finally, Mr. Speaker, we also do sensitization of local communities to the dangers and hazards of handling an exploded ordinance, uh, which is a continuous process that the Kenya, the Kenya Defense Forces undertake. This also is conducted even within our areas that we do uh, uh, train our troops. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Very well, honorable members. We move to question 312 of 2023 by, uh, by the honorable member from Oyale, Honorable Guyo Jaldesa. Proceed. Thank you, Mr. Speaker for giving me the chance to ask this question. And I uh, also join the other colleagues in welcoming Honorable Duale to the House. Um, could the Cabinet Secretary explain the circumstances under which the Kenya Defense Forces settled in other camp, Moyale constituency, and whether the prevailing conditions in the area are still just, uh, area still justify their continued presence? Question two, provide details. Could the cabinet secretary provide details regarding the source of the land provided to KDF for settlement and whether there exists an agreement between the local landowners and the government regarding compensation? And finally, could the cabinet secretary provide justification behind KDF's decision to place beacons in people's homes, schools, mosques, and farms which have been perceived as an attempt to acquire additional land and further enumerate the corporate social responsibility of the CSR initiatives taken by KDF since its settlement in Moele constituency in 1980. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Minister. Mr. Speaker, KDF established order camp in the early 80s uh, for the purpose of supporting civil authority in the maintenance of peace in Moyale and its environment, particularly to deter incursions due to the prolonged regional conflict leading to the killings of Kenyans and destruction of property. It's also important to underscore that Moyale is a strategic entry point into our country and a link to the greater Horn of Africa. And against this backdrop, Mr. Speaker, therefore, the incursion experience worsened over time, reaching their peak in the, in the 80s and continue to date, though on a reduced scale owing to increased security measures. And I'm sure, Mr. Speaker, Honorable 
my good friend, Daktari, needs a, a camp more than any other place because of the insecurity in those parts of the country, which I think the KDF will deal with. Two, Mr. Speaker, there's cross-border cattle rustling, as well as human arms, drug and contraband trafficking, which is rampant, and the camp plays a critical role working with the other multi-agency team to mitigate this growing challenge that is compounded again by the emergency of terrorism. Three, Mr. Speaker, prior to the establishment of order military camp, incursions threatened to completely disrupt the social economic activity of the local communities. However, due to the security umbrella provided by KDF and other multi-agency team from order within the framework of working with other security players, Moyale Town and its environs today is thriving economically. It's one of the best cities, Mr. Speaker, where you can find even a five-star hotel. Mr. Speaker, the KDF continued presence at order camp is desirable, it is important, and is part of our strategic military posture to secure Kenyan borders by enabling proactive principles to challenge. So, Speaker, if you look at the strategic plan of the Kenya military, or KDF, you'll find now we have over, we are going to establish, and some we have, uh, over five military camps in Turkana, in West Pokot, in Marsabit, in Garissa, in Wajia, in Mandera. This is part of making sure that within the conflict in the Horn of Africa, we secure our borders from South Sudan, Somalia, Ethiopia, and all our neighboring countries, Mr. Speaker. We have five neighbors, five land neighbors, and one sea neighbor. Mr. Speaker, the second question was provide details regarding the source of land provided to KDF. As stated previously, KDF, Mr. Speaker, occupied order camp in Golbo Ward, Moyale constituency in the, in the 80s, the 1980s, to mitigate security challenge in the then Northern Frontier District. This was one of the measures to defend the country from external aggression, thus forming a basis for then the County Council of Moyale to allocate 827 hectares of land for military use. In this connection, Mr. Speaker, the Military of Defense initiated formal acquisition of the land in the year 2000s, when it became mandatory for all government and public land to be documented. The process, Mr. Speaker, was however not completed in time, therefore necessitating further engagement with the county government of Marsabit in 2019. Later, Mr. Speaker, the county government of Marsabit, relying on the unapproved part development, PDP, of 2004, formally allocated KDF 242.8 hectares of land to the Minister of Defense. Then Minister of Lands, Public Works, Housing, and Urban Development, Mr. Speaker, during the planning and survey in 2001, and 2003, respectively, established the total acreage of land to 827 hectares. The Minister of Defense, Mr. Speaker, therefore, followed due process of land allocation and has it in custody. The allocation letter by the county government of Marsabit, the public participation report, the approved PDP, and survey plans. The last question, Mr. Speaker, was to provide justification behind KDF's decision to place beacons in people's homes, schools, mosques, farms, which have not been perceived, which have been perceived as attempts to acquire additional land. Speaker, the, present, the placement of beacons was informed by the cadastral survey of other military land undertaken by Survey of Kenya, who are the custodians of all cadastral maps in the Republic of Kenya. During the cadastral survey, Mr. Speaker, survey of Kenya established that there was encroachment in the order military camp. This included schools, administration offices, worship spaces, and human settlements. With reference to corporate social responsibility, Mr. Speaker, Minister of Defense has been instrumental in promoting peace and security in the area through provision of water 
by constructing water pans, boreholes, boreholes drilling during the recent drought, and in areas such as El Edimtu, Gandile, Farole, Idido, Bubisa, Demo, and Saku. Mr. Speaker, I really want to urge the Honorable Member for Moyale. Since the time I became the Minister for Defense, we have made a deliberate attempt to make sure that we work with the communities very well. We had serious land dispute in Eldoret in our training camp, and we have sat with the leadership of that county, and we have resolved our outstanding issues. We are now talking to the leadership of Isiolo County, where we have a historical land dispute with our, 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 our training bases. We are, talk, we, are, we, are, we are convening a meeting with Meru County. So every county, and Mr. Speaker, I want to undertake that honorable member for Moyale, no school will be demolished, no mosque will be demolished, no health facility will be demolished. We will sit with you. We will sit with the leadership of Marsabet. Kenya is big. Marsabet has enough land. You will create land for our military, and we will listen to you, and we will make sure we reach a decision that is best to the people you represent and best to KDF to promote our national security interests. I undertake to say that, please, we will formally write to you, and you will come to defense headquarters. You will sit with our land people, and we'll resolve this matter. Uh, thank you. Uh, let me thank you, Honorable Minister, for your magnanimity in the, your last statement, because all this business we do here in terms of question is to, supposed to resolve the people's issues and actually get an amicable the settlement. But then let's have the Honorable Guyo. Thank you. Mr. Uh, Speaker, I'm happy with the response of the Cabinet Secretary in his off-the-cuff speech or response, because what was written for him was actually not factual. Number one, Moyale County Council did not exist in the 1980s. And uh, when somebody says it was given to them by Moyale County Council, that's not factual. And the fact that Moyale is far from Nairobi, it does not warrant for us to receive non-factual statements or response. The role of KDF is not battling with Katarasli, to the best of my knowledge. The role of KDF is not to com combat with drugs and contraband trafficking. I think whoever wrote this statement for the minister did not do a good job. But of the CSR activities which were listed, there is no single one in Moele constituency. All those things, and I was saying, the fact that they are saying they have done something in Saku, which is non-specific. Saku is a constituency. And you cannot say that you have done something in Saku. It needs to be, we need to be told they have done something somewhere in Saku, in this and that kind of place. But when they say this, it's not. Um, the expansion of the area that they were given by the county government of Marsabe is not, did not involve the communities that's living around there. I'm happy that the cabinet secretary said that we shall sit together and agree on the way forward. But when people are claiming a stretch of land 15 kilometers on one side and 15 kilometers on the other side, it cannot be accepted. The people on the ground will not accept that, and it's a so co cause of conflict within the, with the people and the government that we want to serve loyally. So the county government, if they get anything, any land that people are occupying, and I'm happy that you have promised on to the house and the nation that no school will be demolished, no homes will be demolished, no farms will be taken away. We have some vast areas of land that we can actually give to the army if they want that kind of land. Areas which are even strategic in prevention Honorable of crimes. Goyo, this is question time. 
So really, so, this must, what you are all saying must be put in question form. It is, Proceed. actually. I put them. Uh, please. So, I now, I do trust and respect the CS. I want to make a request that through you, the Speaker, you authorize the Defense Committee of the House to go and, on a fact-finding mission to see that area for themselves. So that when things don't work the way we want, the people, the Defense Committee will be in the know. Thank you, Speaker. Very well. Any supplementary question? Any? There being no other supplementary questions of that, Minister? The Speaker, Honorable Yaldesa is a very respectable professional. But I want to go on record that county councils existed in the 80s. And there are members of this house who their fathers were chairs of county councils. Now I'm talking about county council. So Marsabet County Council controlled Moyale then and not now. Two, Honorable Speaker, KDF has reduced, has silenced the guns in North Rift. What are we dealing with in North Rift? We are dealing with the cattle rustling. So it's our function. One of the functions which this house has approved, today we can be called to deal with cattle rustling. We have silenced the guns in North Rift. We have silenced the guns in Marsabet County, where the member comes from, where ethnic animosity and deaths happened. I come from that region. And that's why we are building, he knows we are building serious military camps, both for our external, to deal with aggression from Ethiopia and other areas, but to deal with internally. So speaker, today the member knows Marsabet is the biggest gateway of drugs. He knows it. And please, because drugs is going to destroy communities. If a drug dealer, a consignment passes through our roadblocks, as we are looking for terrorists, we will deal with it. So it's our mandate. We have a function to protect the country, both from outside aggression and from inside aggression. Mr. Speaker, I have offered a solution, but I am seeing the member wants to go a long route of involving the Committee of Defense and Foreign Relations. That is his choice, Mr. Speaker, because it will give him extra bonga point. It will delay his time. But I can assure you, I have given you the shortest route if you want us to amicably resolve this matter. I am telling you to walk to defense headquarters. In our conference room, we resolve this matter like the good leaders of Wasingishu, like the good leaders of Isiolo who are coming, like the good leaders of Meru County. And I really want to ask this house, any county or constituency that has a land dispute with the Kenya Defense Forces, our first point of call is let us sit together. Because the defense, our forces, must always project a posture of community. We love the community. So if you want uh, to go to the committee, well and good, the committee will summon me, and I will bring all the documents, all the ownership. But if you want to help the people of other, who I'm sure are listening to me, Good leaders look for quick solutions. I'm offering you a quick solution. Please, our defense headquarters is less than two kilometers from this parliament. Next week, Monday, come to us. Come with the great leaders of Marsabet, including our deputy minority, WIP. Come with our governor. Come with Honorable Saku. Come with all the MCS. We resolve the matter amicably. But if you want to take through a Honorable Koech led committee, I am ready for it. Thank you. Very well, I think uh, the, in all, there's good spirit to get an amicable solution for that, and honorable member, for your requests, whether we can take the matter to the defense committee, indeed, we change our standing order so that the questions can be asked from here. But if need be, and after you will have visited the defense headquarters, if you are so willing to do so, and you still feel that we take the matter to the defense committee, you will advise me and I will do so as you have requested. Yes, what's your last bite? Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Um, 
I will go by the suggestion that we go to the defense headquarters. If it doesn't, that doesn't solve the problem, the other option is still open. But now that our brother Dwale is from the north, and I expect him to be understanding, then let us go to the defense headquarters. The only problem, you know, um, I think he should give us a date now. He said Monday. Monday, and therefore as soon as possible. Monday. Right. Yeah. Time. Honorable member, you, we can have a tete a tete. <laughs> we, we are in the house. Thank you. Let's move to question 313 of 2023 by Honorable Member Phyllis Batu. Uh, Mr. Speaker, my question to the Cabinet Secretary Defense is. Uh, a clarification as to why CPL Jackson Kimeli Cheruyot from Moiben, whose service number is 60621, ex service member, served in the military for 26 years, and yet up to date he, is, he has not received compensation for injuries he sustained in an IED explosion while he was in Kismayu on 17 June 2013. That time he was operating a water voucher during the performance of his duties. That is what I have for the Cabinet Secretary, Mr. Speaker. The Cabinet uh, Secretary. The Speaker, in tandem with the service regulation of KDF, a medical board was conducted in 2014. It recommended compensation to the service member at a rate of 50%. Subsequently, his file was submitted to the pension office of the National Treasury for processing, leading him to being paid a disability pension lump sum in 2015. To date, Mr. Speaker, he continues to draw Kenya shillings, 14,352 per month for the same compensation. So his matter uh, is as of that. We have paid him, we don't owe him anything, and uh, both the National Treasury and KDF have done their bit. Uh, Honorable Bato. Uh, okay, what about the, lump, the, the compensation, the, this amount which is supposed to be paid, is it the Ministry of Defense to follow up this matter or where does the officer now go for the remaining, um, the, the, the balance, the, the lump sum? Professor, you seem to indicate that not all the monies have been paid, ministers had. Any other supplementary question? Yes, Honorable. Proceed. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, I want to join the rest of the members in this house to really uh, thank the CS Defense for being available whenever you look for him in his office, he is literally available. Thank you. Honorable Speaker, having said that, Honorable Speaker, I want to ask uh, the Honorable CS that we have had incidents where there are explosives in areas where the military has trained. Sometimes civilians or even children playing, they are injured by the IEDs. How are they compensated? What measures do you take? to ensure that those families, too, are compensated. Thank you, Honorable Speaker. Minister. Mr. Speaker, I think uh, the question uh, by, by Honorable Phyllis Barto, I think the, my question is very clear. Maybe the member uh, did not, uh, your ex-capro ja Jackson Kimeli did not give you of Kenya, third Kenya rival, did not give you full details. 
I have said it according to our regulations, a medical board was conducted in 2014 and it recommended compensation for this service member at the rate of 50%. Subsequently, all the process up to the National Treasury was undertaken for processing leading to him being paid disability pension lump sum fund in 2015. To date, as per our regulations, he earns 14,352 per month on the same compensation. Those are factual. If he's not getting it, we are ready to provide evidence. I think the second question, uh, Mr. Speaker, even though I've answered earlier, that must be the member of parliament, a member of Embo County, if I'm right. Where? Meru, Meru. Not Meru. No, me? Honorable yes. Minister, proceed. That's yes. the Honorable Member for Meru. Nominated. Nominated, yes, uh, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker. The former trade unionist. Yes, Mr. Speaker, it proceed. is good, particularly when you're in the House and it's on live TV, it's good to, to mention members by their names. Then uh, one time, you know, the Speaker, you are in the House, you say uh, that one. It's not. Uh, so I didn't want to go that way. I think I've answered and I'll give the answer that we have an elaborate plan to make sure that uh, all the ordinance we use during training does not affect our members of the public. But uh, I'm sure the clerk uh, at the table office or the, at the front can give an answer, which is I've elaborated here to the member, the limited member from Meru. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Uh, very well, let's move to question uh, 314 of 2023 by the Honorable Member for Suna West, Honorable Peter Masara. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, before I ask the question, I'll ask you because it's the last question. At the end of it, you'll, you'll give me even one minute. There was a, a, a supplementary question concerning a, a already uh, dispensed with question, which is directly related to my sub county, and which is administrative. I may not, I may not. It's not a must. I'll get an answer here, but it can help the minister because it is an outstanding issue, which had, I have written several times to the defence forces, but uh, uh, it has not been implemented. So I'll request you that after the answer, you just uh, when I'll be giving my supplementary question. I divert a bit and give that question, of which it will not be a mass. He answers it here, but he can uh, uh, administratively handle the issue. Because Thank you. We shall see when you'll have uh, brought out the question. Thank you. Uh, meanwhile, that was a uh, nominated member of parliament, Honorable Dorothy Mudoni, of the nominated uh, member of the UDA party. You may proceed, Honorable Masara. That was for record purposes. Yes. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. My question is to the Cabinet Secretary of Defense. And it is question number 314 of, of 2023. Could the cabinet uh, secretary explain the circumstances under which Mr. Churchill Odiambo Osano, an ex soldier in the Kenya Defense Forces, was forcefully evicted from the Department of Defense married quarters within the camp? Two, state when Mr. Churchill Odiambo will be allowed to access the camp to collect his personal belongings that were locked up since the, force, the forceful eviction. And finally, state when Mr. Churchill Odiambo will be paid disability pension and compensation since he was discharged from the service on medical ground as a disabled person on 31st August 2019. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Minister. <clears throat> Mr. Speaker. Ex senior Sergeant Odiambo vacated the barracks as his run out date, ROD, of 30th August 2019 approached, abandoning his family therein. Speaker, so his date of discharge was on 30th of August 2019. And before then, he abandoned his family therein in the camp. Efforts to have him return to the barracks to hand over the government quota was very unsuccessful. Uh, unsuccessful. 
Members of his family, Mr. Speaker, however, continue to stay in the barracks four months beyond the ex-service member's ROD. ROD, Mr. Speaker, is once your date of retire reaches, you are an honorable dismiss Baraza, can attest to because he's a, a former member of KDF, you have no choice, otherwise you have to vacate the quarters, the government quarter. So this member disappeared. They said, his family said for four months, this, Mr. Speaker, was untenable within the regulations of Kenya Defense Forces and standing orders. And the family was advised that it was not possible for them to stay on indefinitely. Consequently, Mr. Speaker, the spies voluntarily, his wife voluntarily relocated to Buruburu to live with her brother. Indeed, the said brother assisted his sister to shift together with the children and the household items. And therefore, there was no forceful eviction no personal item remained in the barracks. On the disability pension, Mr. Speaker, ex-senior Sergeant Odiambo was enlisted in the KDF on the 26th of February 2007 and was initially discharged on a compassionate grounds at his own request. And the file, Mr. Speaker, is there via discharge instruction dated 24th of April 2019. He is redressed on May 2nd, 2019, and he requested to be discharged on medical grounds. Mr. Speaker, I'm ready to provide. But these are the documents, Mr. Speaker, that in the Defense Council, the Air Force Commander signs, the Army Commander signs, the Navy Commander signs, the CDF signs, and ultimately I sign as the Chair of the Defense. So this uh, uh, ex-senior Sergeant Odiambo requested to be discharged on medical grounds due to his injury sustained while in service. Permanent, he got a permanent hearing loss and a major dis depressive disorder. Mr. Speaker, the redress was granted to him from his uh, uh, unit commander all the way to the then defense minister. The redress was granted, and the reason for the discharge was amended to read on medical grounds, and new instructions were issued on May 24th, 2019. His date of discharge was given as 30th of August, 2019. Speaker, the medical board conducted an award, conducted an award, and he was given 45% medical pension compensation, 30% for hearing loss, 15% for major depression, depressive disorder. And in this regard, Mr. Speaker, his file was submitted to the Pension Office of the National Treasury on 23rd of October 2019, followed by the disability claim on November 14th, 2019. The delay in settling his pension arose, from the follow, fro, arose following the annulment, Mr. Speaker, of the KDF pensions and gratuity regulations of 2017 by this House, the National Assembly, in 2018. This led to delay in processing his military disability pension as from October 2019. This, however, Mr. Speaker, was approved and a pension assessment board was established via the Defense Council instruction dated July 2022 he has since visited the pension office of the National Treasury to change his pay point, and his file is being processed accordingly. Mr. Speaker, I want to assure Honorable Masara, I will take it myself and my office to make sure the National Treasury now and the pension fund pays his dues within the next 30 days. And I come to assure because that is his voter, is his constituencies. Now a file and everything is there. Adon Masara, please write to me and my officers will follow up to Treasury so that ex-Sergeant Odiambo is paid his due, which is his.
Very well, Honorable Masara. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Vanasias, for the response. But I'll, I'll uh, kindly request your able office to provide documentation to his discharge. Because I have uh, a very authentic document from several establishment, the Kenya Commission of Human Rights, uh, the National Council of Persons Living with Disability, Kituo Chasheria Legal Advice Center, where they wrote to KDF, but the KDF never responded. So Chair, that, that take has back. It's not only this guy, uh, this particular officer got an opportunity to, uh, uh, to reach me out to ask this question on his behalf. How many other officers are there who were dismissed, have not been compensated to date, who are, who are now suffering? And it brings another question, Mr. Speaker. Do KDF usually provide psycho, psychological support to such officers once dismissed? Because you can imagine somebody was earning, he has been dismissed from 2019 to date, he has not been compensated. How do such an officer survive, Mr. Speaker? That's a, a food for thought for us, and it's a food for thought for the CS, so that they can look into ways. This is somebody who has served this country as a, a soldier. Now that is disabled. Do we abandon them that way, or there is something we can do as a country to protect them? Mr. Speaker, my other question was, it was on the socio-political variables on the recruitment, Mr. Speaker. The Suna West constituency recruitment is going to be done, but it's not going to be done at the uh, sub-county headquarters. Sub-county headquarters in at Pinyoye, but the recruitment is going to be done at uh, Bondo. I've written several letters, even in the 12th parliament, to change the, the recruitment center to be at the headquarters. Two, the same Suna West constituency is a cosmopolitan, and even the majority indigenous, there are sub, so many sub-clans, like the Wanyara, the Wanji, uh, 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 the one uh, uh, Kamungu, of which nobody is in the KDF. So, Mr. Speaker, as they'll be looking for issues of, of uh, uh, socio-political uh, variable, they need to consider such a sub county so that each and every clan can boast of having even one KDF officer because it, they become pride of such a clan. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Very well. Any other supplementary on that? In the absence of the same, I may guide that uh, the last two questions, because they can also, they are very substantive, and um, the minister w uh, can be availed again another time to deal with them. But on the first two, I think, let me call upon the minister to answer it. Proceed, minister. Yes, Mr. Mrs., Mrs., uh, Speaker. I think I've answered and uh, I assured the Honorable Masara that uh, I will follow up with the National Treasury Pension Fund because there's something a minister said the other day, I don't know what one government approach. So uh, let me also use that gov one government approach. But as I provide documents, because our documents are there, I will also be very happy, Honorable Masara, if you provide me with those documents from human rights and the other groups so that I can see why they were not responded. Those letters were not responded to. Because in, our, in, 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 in defense, they respond. But Mr. Speaker, just to say, we have a very robust insurance scheme and policy for our retired officers called DEFMIS. And I'm sure you asked the member, if he was contributing before he left the discipline force, then he must be enjoying a very robust. But there were some of our officers who never contributed. They didn't see the value. Secondly, for our serving officers, Mr. Speaker, we have the state of the art wellness center. Our officers who get injured within the country, outside the country, we make sure that we, they, they, they get all the psychosocial support. So we will ask the defense committee to visit our uh, wellness center, Mr. Speaker. But Mr. Speaker, on the issue of uh, now the recruitment, you know the member was talking about many clans. We don't recruit clans. We recruit Kenyans. And the first thing we get is an ID card. So I am very sorry to say that uh, if I go that route, then this house, everybody will uh, bring his clan. 
So and they are Kenyans. When they appear, we don't ask them, which clan are you? But uh, because you have raised as an issue on the location, please, uh, before, maybe tomorrow, you write a letter to either me or to the CDF so that we discuss and we will call you and agree before 28th what we can do to make sure that uh, the most appropriate uh, location, including even the, the cosmopolitan. The cosmopolitans are Kenyans. If they are in that cosmopolitan, they came from Bungoma, they came from Garissa, they came from Nyeri, from Kisumu. They are Kenyans, so they must be recruited. But uh, please write, and I think by latest Monday we will call you and we will uh, make a decision. We want to make, we want to make the recruitment uh, available to a wider uh, section of the Kenyan society. The same problem, the Honorable Member for Galole had it, so we want to address all those uh, collectively. Uh, thank you, Minister. Uh, you still have something? Yes, my only Masara. Mr. P Speaker, on the same note, just for information, uh, there is one location between Suna West and Suna East called Nyabisawa location. This location was hived from Suna West to Suna East during the, uh, the boundary by IEBC. P uh, uh, the residents of this particular location are really suffering, Mr. Speaker. Reasons being, during the recruitment, if they go to Suna East, they are told you belong to Suna West. When they go to Suna West, they are told you, go to, you belong to Suna East. So we are doing a lot of disservice to youths of this particular location. So the minister need to take key, uh, uh, note that so, uh, Sunanya Bisawa location is officially under Suna East location. So all residents, all residents who were born before 2013, when Migori County, Migori uh, constituency was subdivided, uh, their, their, their documentation will show they were born in Suna West. But now, currently, they are members of Suna East politically, administratively. So this one need to, because in the, sub, for the last five years of recruitment, there, nobody has been recruited there because of that uh, confusion. So this need to be corrected also, uh, uh, Mr. Speaker, and thank you for uh, granting me this opportunity. Very well, and I think uh, the minister was magnanimous again enough to indicate that you put all these things in writing. In fact, he insinuated that he would want to have a meeting with you because he also wants to look at the documents you have I want to guide that you proceed and do that right up, including what you have just said lastly. Like I said earlier, this is intended to actually make the people get the services. And if that can be achieved, it's very, very good. And let me thank the minister because you have candidly answered the questions. Some of them even giving timelines that in 30 days, this should have happened. And this is what we intended to have. So yeah, and that's very, very good. And I think this is because uh, the minister, uh, is, uh, having been a ranking member, went through the earlier 10th uh, parliament and other parliament before where we had the question time and ministers being put on notice. So I really want us to stop this now, allow the minister to go, so that we move to the next order. But Honorable Kamkate, let me give you the last bite. Proceed, Honorable Kamkate. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. Um, uh, I apologize to the Speaker for coming at the tail end, but thank you for the, for the opportunity. Mr. Speaker, I have one question for <coughs> the Elbow Cabinet Secretary. Uh, could the Cabinet Secretary, as a, as a policy matter, uh, together with the Department of Defense, consider, Mr. Speaker, using other considerations other than academic in the recruitment of um, military officers. So that in, Mr. Speaker, there are Kenyans who are otherwise enabled and they will be able to defend this country if given the opportunity. And I refer, Mr. Speaker, to those Kenyans who have not had the opportunity to go to school properly, uh, not, for, not because they don't want to go to school, but for lack of opportunity, especially among the pastoralist communities where, where, where he, he, he comes from. 
And history has proven, Mr. Speaker, that even during the colonial times, there were special regiments of uh, unschooled officers. So what's your question? Because you are I have, I've actually chair. asked the question. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, we've wind up here. You had an interest on of Maungu. What is your interest? And then we uh, close this matter. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I will allow me also to uh, thank the Honorable Minister for being very articulate in responding to our issues. Uh, just like uh, my good friend, Honorable Kamtet, has just been talking about the recruitment that is coming from Latia. Uh, we have a lot of interest with the recruitment that is happening across the country. And year in, year out, Mr. Speaker, cartels have emerged, taking money from uh, our parents and villages for the recruitment that is happening, Mr. Speaker. This matter is currently happening in our various constituents across the country. Mr. Speaker. Yes, what's your point of order, Honorable Dean Masberasa? You have the mic, proceed. Give Honorable Baraza another mic. Yeah. Use the one on your left. I want to thank you, Mr. Speaker. When uh, I am 100% sure that that question was properly answered, unless if the Honorable Member had just come in, in this house. So we have uh, other matters on the order paper. I think from your communication, the minister has done very well. I think we'll just release him and we'll proceed. Uh, thank you. Indeed, uh, Honorable Maungu, this matter had been dealt with, but uh, uh, let me give you 30 seconds to uh, just conclude what you say. The member was just spoken with my good friend, Mr. Speaker, and uh, we had an issue that we didn't complete outside. So he's trying to square it to the floor of the house. <laughs> That's why he's taking me on the same matter. <laughs> that aside, Mr. Speaker, uh, I did come in that yes, and I just wanted to have confirmation from the good friend, Honorable CS, now that uh, the recruitment is on. Are we assured that it will be fair and square to our Oh, members? it was thoroughly dealt with. Asante. Yes, leader. Honorable Speaker, thank you very much. I want to very, very sincerely on behalf of uh, the majority side and members of this house to thank you, Cabinet Secretary, for a wonderful job well done. I think uh, you have given us the marking scheme of how cabinet secretary should answer questions in this house. As, as you go to talk to your fellow colleagues, they come here sometimes and they read long and long and acres and acres of statements, which do not help these members. But you have seen, a lot of members stayed here for you because of the way you are eloquently uh, speaking on behalf of government and expressing yourself. But sometimes you have a cabinet secretary who starts and everybody else leaves because probably they're not making sense or probably they're just saying things that members don't want to hear. But I think you have said what members want to see here. You have made sense and you have expressed government policy very, very well. And your research was very well. We want to thank you, Cabinet Secretary Duale, for a good job well done. Pass our sincere gratitude to the President for introducing this question time. Asante San and God bless you. Thank you. The House has uh, other businesses to conduct. Uh, 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 okay, Minister, for Kamket's question and any small remark. The Speaker, that's a very, very controversial statement by Honorable Kamket. And uh, he shared this with me when we were in North Rift. And I told him we will discuss it uh, behind the tent. Now that he has, <laughs> now that he has brought to the, to the fore and uh, serious uh, councils like Honorable Kaluma are sitting here. I think, Chair, yeah, I will not answer that. Maybe let, let the House decide on the recruitment criteria. Because the next question I'll be asked is then why do people go to school? <laughs> so, Mr. Speaker, I think he, he, Honorable Kamket, when we were in Chelimugot, he made a lot of sense. And I really agreed with him. But it's a matter uh, to be discussed, taken to National Security Council taken to cabinet, come to the house as a policy, and then he'll have his time. Maybe in the third recruitment. <laughs> Thank you, Speaker. Thank you, Minister. You are now free to go back to your other businesses and matters of government. Uh, next order. 
Order number 10, the Pensions Amendment Bill, National Assembly Bill number 44 of 2022, second reading. Yes, Honorable Didmas Brother. 